Hi, and welcome back, Attorney Steve Vondran, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vondran Legal Hour. Okay, so we are talking here today about photo infringement, and we're licensed to practice law in California and Arizona. We accept federal copyright and trademark cases nationwide. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is a topic that's coming up, and you may be a webmaster, you may be a business owner, you may have used a picture on your website. And it may be something, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, non-impressive as far as photos go. It may be a picture of a hammer, or could be a picture of a dog, um, you know, could be just some weird, you know, little images, could be really nice images, um, on the other hand. But you may have received a demand letter from a company or a law firm telling you that you have infringed their copyrights and you are in big trouble you are needing to pay. You're going to have to pay up and cough up a lot of money here that the damages under the federal copyright law can be as high as $150,000 per willful infringement if they can show that it's willful, which is a little bit of a relaxed standard. Um, you know, so business owners will get these letters. Sometimes the letter will say, log into this web portal and make a payment and you'll get a copyright release out of it. Almost like you put money in and you get something out, a copyright release, you know, so that it, it's sort of automated and unmanned kind of a thing. And, you know, people just go, what do I do? This letter is here. Am I in legal trouble? Are there defenses? Is there a way I can fight this? Um, they're asking for $5,000. I don't have that kind of money. What do I do? So this blog is going to be a just a general, my top 10 tips for dealing with photo infringement attorneys and representatives of the artists, okay? And yes, we do agree, artists need to be paid, but I got news for you. Some of the stuff we see, it doesn't really look much like art to me. It's something a six-year-old kid could snap on their iPhone. Nevertheless... We're going to go over our top 10 um, tips here if you got a letter. So get out your pen and pad, piece of paper. If you need more information, go to photolitigation.com. That's our website, photolitigation.com. And there's a lot more information there for you, okay? So let's get down to it. So you get the letter. The first thing I want to do, tip number one, make sure the company that sent you the letter is real. I mean, what could be worse than paying some fake company in Nigeria? So you always want to check. I mean, it's really easy to forge or mimic a legitimate logo and letterhead. So you want to make sure you're dealing with a real company. And it's, you know, if you do end up paying a fee for the photo, that it's that it's legitimate, that you're actually getting a copyright release from a real company. That's tip number one. If you don't know how to do that, give us a call. We can help you look it up and try to make that determination. Is this real? Is it not? You know, we can place a phone call once retained and so forth and so on. Okay, that's tip one. Make sure the company's real. Two, make sure the company you are dealing with who claims, if they claim they represent the digital rights owner, somebody, sometimes you get these letters from a company like Artist Defense. They may say, well, we represent the rights holder, you know, and, and they have authorized us to come collect this money. Some Same with some law firms. Some, some intellectual property law firms will come forward and say, we represent this rights holder, you know, log in and, and pay a fee. Well, you know, you want to make sure that the company that says they're representing the digital image owner, ask them to see a power of attorney. Can they show that they have the legal right to collect and act on behalf of the alleged rights holder? So that's number two, where you have a company representing another check and make sure they actually have that legal authority and ask them to send it to you. Don't be shy. Say you're asking for money. I need to make sure I'm not wasting my money. There's lots of scams out there, right? Okay, so that's two. Top tip number three, consider immediately taking down any infringing photos off your website. So if you get a letter and you say, gosh, I knew, I knew that was infringing. And, you know, I got the letter. I didn't think anyone would see it. I'm just like one tiny little web page in the universe. I can't believe somebody found that, you know, buried on page 40 of my website. You know, there was, sure, I used a little image. You know, um, consider taking that down. That, that is something courts would consider as a mitigating factor if you take that down. If the case ends up going to court, there is some case law authority on that, that that would be considered a mitigating factor, thus re potentially reducing your damages, thus potentially reducing attorney fees you might have to pay 
if you can't get it settled, if it goes to court and, you know, the, the plaintiff wants to be unreasonable and seek a ton of money against you. So that's tip number three. Consider taking it down immediately. Tip four, consider the defense of hiring a third party to post photos. Let's call it the webmaster defense. So let's say that you have a third party that manages your, your corporate website. You have a SEO company, you have a webmaster, somebody's out there putting photos on and you're trusting them. You're saying, well, you know, um, we trust them. We figure they know what they're doing and, you know, getting, you know, uh, pirated photos is not something we were aware of. So that would be something that you would want to look into. Maybe the webmaster has some sort of, if you negotiated your contract, maybe there's an indemnification clause in there where the webmaster has to pick it up. Okay, so we also get calls from webmasters. Webmaster says, yeah, I did it. I screwed up. Don't know what I was doing. I found it on, on Google. I thought it was I was able to use it. No, if it's on Google, does not automatically mean that you get to use it on your website. You have to make sure it's either in the public domain or you have a license to use it. Now, there are some really nice public domain sites that you can find out there. So just Google public domain photos or, you know, copyright free photos. So, but uh, consider your rights as against a webmaster, okay? And then also, if a webmaster is doing it, that would lower the willful infringement element on your end. So you could say, well, it was innocent on my end. I had no clue. Innocent infringement under the federal copyright laws can bring in a, you know, a uh, judgment as low as $200 per infringed items. So that is a big deal. And if you're trying to negotiate out a settlement, you know, they're always talking willful 30 to 150,000, you know, and that's what the statute says. And that's for, you know, registered copyrights. I, and we'll talk about that in a second. But, you know, just, you know, like I said, just consider the webmaster defense that may help show that you were just innocent and had no intent, no willfulness no, you know, you know, you didn't have the spirit of a pirate to get this photo. Okay, so that's number tip number four. Moving on to number five, this is something important. Request a three-year history of the licensing fees for the image at issue. Okay, so this is something that they normally do where they say, you know, you licensed uh, the photo of the rusty gate, and the rusty gate, uh, that's one of our most popular photos, and you know, that one goes for 2000 We We license that out for 2000 so you used it for two years, you owe us four or 5000 I would just ask to say, well, that sounds nice and neat, um, but why don't you show me a history of the licensing fees that have been paid on this particular image so that we can actually verify that this is not just some made-up price that you're trying to get some nice big you know, uh, settlement out of me for nothing. So that has to bear... Um, if these case, cases go to court, this is a litigation tip for you. If these cases go to court... The copyright damages, the amount that the court would, may eventually award, has to bear some relation to the actual damages suffered. So, you know, they can't just be making up things, you know, hey, that Rusty Gates, you know, it's 15000 you know, that's what we would try to license it for, but we've never actually licensed one. You know, so ask these questions, request these proof. I'm trying to work with you, but I do need some proof to make sure we know, because you may have a better case, and I don't want to get you excited on this, but you may have a better case to say, you know, take it to court. And, you know, if you're not going to take this amount of money, let's go to court. There is some case law out there that says if it's innocent, if it's some, you know, photo that's worth, you know, a thousand bucks and it's worth a thousand, let's not call it 8,000 or 10,000. So, um, and that's where we get into trolling, where we say a, a, um, company that's pursuing large claims where they're just not warranted and they're bullying and threatening. I mean, that that moves into what we call the trolls, the trolling. Okay, so that's number five. Request a three-year history of licensing fees. Number six, request to see proof that the images were copyrighted with the U.S. Copyright Office. Um, this is important. So you want to make sure because when something's copyrighted with the Copyright Office, the United States Copyright Office, 
office, then the rights holder, the person that owns the rights to that copyright, can seek the statutory damages. And that's the big kicker in copyright law is when you can actually say, well, I, you know, you have a thousand dollars in damages due to an unlicensed image, but they go and try to seek thirty to one hundred and fifty thousand for willful infringement. So, you know, that's pretty crazy. So I always want to ask, OK, if this was copyrighted, let's take a look. Give me the registration number. I want to see it. I want to look it up. I want to, you know, I want to see when it was registered, all that stuff. So ask to see a copy. Um, it'd be something that would probably surprise them in most cases. They'd say, well, somebody actually asked for the copyright registration. Unbelievable. Uh, it's also important to ask for these registrations because if there are several images, if they're saying you infringed four or five images, if they were all registered as a compilation, so to save money, they took four or five images and got it registered as a compilation, that would only be one infringement. And they may be trying to hit you with four or five infringements when it should be one infringement. So that's another kind of important point that you can use in negotiations. Okay, so that's number six. Number seven, if you use personal non-commercial, if the use of the photo was non-commercial on a personal site, Facebook, Twitter, something you're just goofing around, having some fun, um, maybe it's a political rant or something that you're on, consider whether a fair use defense might apply. This is big because in this day and age, copyright holders, they believe there's a fair use defense, but they believe it's so minimal that it should never apply to you. So this is really an area. There's a four-factor test. You know, one of the keys to me, one of the keys of the four um, factors is whether the use was commercial. If you're trying to make money off the use of their photo, that's commercial. You took the whole photo. You know, if you're if you're robbing their market, these are some of the factors that the courts look at then you might not be able to assert a fair use defense. But if you can show that this is, look, I posted your photo on my Facebook page. I was goofing around talking to my friends. I mean, that's non-commercial. It's not going to rob your market of anything. You know, consider whether fair use defense might apply. And that's, again, another analysis that we can help with. OK, that's number seven. Number eight, know that in negotiations, there is usually not a need to rush it, okay? So a lot of people think, oh my God, I got this letter, I'm panicking, my anxiety level's going up, I'm feeling a lot of pressure, I have to get this case settled immediately. Well, that may play into their hand. Um, I like to do actually the reverse, which is take my time, make sure I'm going through things, make sure I understand what the claims are, make sure what they want is damages. Usually if you engage with a rights holder, this is something that I have found in in my handling of copyright cases is that usually if you engage with them, that usually settles them down. They usually aren't going to rush to the courthouse and file a lawsuit. So I like to just methodically go through, get the evidence, review it. And then if I make an offer, we're going to make a small offer. You know, we're going to start low, you know, 50, 150, 200 bucks, you know, put something out there. Now, they're probably not going to want to accept that because usually these copyright holders think that their works are, you know, a, a photo that they took is somehow worth 1000 1500 And I'm not saying that in all cases that's not true. I'm just saying you have to take a look at the facts and the photos before you. So, But usually I like to start slow, move it up very slowly, small increments, put some time between your emails and your phone calls, make sure that your communications are protected by because copyright is federal law. I like to make sure that I'm putting, you know, confidential settlement offers on my email headers to make sure that's big and clear and bold and that these are settlement communications that should not be deemed admissible in any court or used in any legal proceeding for any purpose. Something like that where you're basically where if you end up going to court and they say, well, look here, they admitted they're guilty. They offered us $500. You say that was for settlement purposes, judge. That email should not even be looked at. I was doing that to try to settle this so I wouldn't end up in court. You know, so those are the kinds of things that you want to look at. So again, number eight, no need to rush it. Take your time, be methodical, start low, move up in small increments. Number nine, don't forget, you may be able to ask for payments. Um, sometimes we have... 
I'll say most of the times uh, payments are an option. Not always, but most of the times payments are an option. We do software audits as well where we're dealing with infringed Autodesk, infringed you know, Microsoft Office, you know, Siemens software, things like that. You may be able to make payments, and sometimes they may even offer financing. So some of the photos, I haven't really seen that in the photo infringement area, but something to just bear in mind. If you need payments, don't be afraid to ask for them. Number 10. Make sure to get a confidential settlement release if you are able to settle your case. So this is huge, and you want to make sure that you're getting released if it's your company, because officers and directors can be held liable for copyright infringement. You want to make sure they're getting released. You want to make sure you have a good release. Again, this is an area you may want to hire a copyright attorney to help you, but you've got to get a good settlement. The, a settlement is what we call buy your piece. So you, you buy, you're you buying your piece. You want to close the door. You want to know when that payment goes in that you're not going to be seeing from these f- uh, folks from the rest of your life, basically. Um, that's usually how it goes. So you want a good copyright release. That's why sometimes these automated releases you got to read them carefully. I mean, they may be releasing you for for one product, but not releasing you for others. And, you know, and, and we have heard of cases where they come back for more and they say, well, you settled that one, but you didn't settle these these cases. So be careful. Make sure you get a good confidential copyright release, liability release, whatever you want to call it. That should be part of the deal. Um, At any rate, those are my top 10 tips. Um, Again, if you need to find these tips, I'm going to put them on my website, Photo Litigation, so you can read them. But that's about it. This is general legal information only, not legal advice or a substitute for legal advice. If you need legal help, give us a call. Um, 877-276-5084 is a good place to find us. It's much easier if you just go to photolitigation.com. Okay? I hope that's been helpful. If you like this, feel free to share it on your social media networks. Tell people there is some hope when they're coming down and trying to get all the money from your company, but there is some hope out there. If you need a copyright lawyer, give us a call. This is what we do. We're happy to help. Okay? We do offer low flat rate fees, and I'm going to close with that. Okay? Everybody have a great day. We appreciate you listening to another exciting episode of Vondran Legal Hour. We'll talk to you again.